This is a document published by JP Morgan in September projecting possible SpaceX valuations based on the outcome of its Starlink project. It posits that if Starlink is successful, SpaceX could be worth $120 billion by the end of 2040, which is 20 years from now. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Starlink, of course, is SpaceX's premier satellite constellation that aims to send 12,000 satellites to three different orbit in the next decade. A network of satellites that provide broadband internet services would address many urgent communication needs for many different industries. In the document, six use cases and their potential revenue were discussed. Broadband, autonomous cars, commercial aviation connectivity, business aviation connectivity, connected aircrafts, and maritime activities. Estimations of the total industry revenue were made for these six areas respectively, and a percentage share was assigned to SpaceX satellite business. In summary, the best case for SpaceX adding up all six revenue streams gives SpaceX a net present value of $120 billion. A very impressive number, unimaginable for any launch providers. After the release of the document though, there was a seismic shift in SpaceX plan. The FCC, on behalf of SpaceX, submitted 20 filings to the International Telecommunication Union for 1,500 satellites apiece in various low Earth orbit. This will add 30,000 more satellites to the Starlink operation, drastically increase the investment needed, and perhaps also accelerate the timeline of SpaceX project. In its filing, SpaceX said the additional 30,000 satellites would operate in low Earth orbit at altitudes ranging from 328 kilometers to 580 kilometers. This altitude range is similar to what SpaceX has gotten approval from the FCC, so we can expect similar functions as well. However, we shouldn't get too excited about the possible addition of 30,000 satellites. More satellites in orbit simultaneously does not mean better services. Neither are we certain that SpaceX wanted that many satellites in space at the same time. Reportedly, one Starlink satellite could simultaneously stream 4K videos to 40,000 people, which means with 1,000 satellites, SpaceX need 40 million ground stations to fully utilize its capability. Therefore, 42,000 satellites working simultaneously is quite unnecessary, in my opinion. On the contrary, it is possible that SpaceX simply wanted to occupy those frequencies first through ITU's bring into use procedure where SpaceX will be given priority for a particular frequency band as long as its satellites occupies it first. SpaceX has sent 60 Starlink satellites to orbit in May this year. Among the 60 reached orbit, it was reported that 5% was faulty. Therefore, a constant supply of replacement satellites needs to be launched every year. Additionally, Assuming SpaceX satellites having a lifespan of 5 years during a 10-year period after full deployment of 12,000 satellites, a total of 24,000 satellites will need to be replaced, bringing the number fairly close to 30,000 additional satellites proposed. These are theoretical speculations, but the larger point is this. Considering the fact that SpaceX is launching communication satellites at a scale no one has attempted before, it is more likely to be a gradual, iterated process where SpaceX launches several thousand Starlink satellites and test the market. More satellites will only be attempted when the business is proven to work, so we shouldn't be too optimistic about the cadence of launch. Finally, let's talk about the impact of this huge constellation of satellites in the sky. No matter if it's 12,000 or 42,000 satellites, this constellation will be quite a huge undertaking. As laid out by JP Morgan Research, six commercial areas will be greatly impacted. Other than broadband, all areas of business lack strong competitors for SpaceX. Therefore, it is almost certain that SpaceX will be able to quickly occupy these markets due to its superiority in quality and latency. Even for broadband, SpaceX can tap into the strong underserved rural base in North America and EU to gain traction. As I've explained in my previous video, Due to the low altitude nature of Starlink satellites, the network latency could be as low as 10 milliseconds, competing directly with cable and DSL internet in both urban and rural settings. Therefore, the only thing stops Starlink from being successful, in my opinion, is itself. As long as it works as well as Elon claimed, Starlink should be able to find customers with ease. Furthermore, our modern communication network is built upon old legacy infrastructures and protocols for military purposes during the Cold War. 
We continue to build upon the legacy internet backbones because the old investment and the lack of alternative. That is why AT&T and Verizon can dominate the United States market for communication infrastructures without providing a compelling service. However, Starlink drastically lowers the investment needed for a completely new communication infrastructure. When Elon was asked about internet protocols behind Starlink in early 2018, he suggested that Starlink will have something simpler and peer-to-peer. -peer. In addition to this complete bombshell of information, Musk also pointed out that whatever Starlink emerges to be, it will be by definition more secure than our existing internet infrastructure and will use end-to-end -end encryption encoded at a firmware level. This will of course take a long time, break a lot of norms, and require a complete overall to our internet infrastructure. Considering SpaceX as a whole, it's now clear that SpaceX is entering a new stage of three-pronged businesses We launch services at the center and Starlink and deep space capability on the sides, benefiting from its powerful and rapid launch capability. SpaceX is no longer as dependent on launch services as before, and this trend will only accelerate in 2020. We're already seeing Starlink and deep space exploration play a bigger role, getting 20 million for the military application of Starlink and receiving 3 million grant to build orbit refilling technologies for the moon and Mars. If everything goes well, SpaceX perhaps could become the huge mammoth of a company JP Morgan has projected, but that still requires a lot more careful planning to work.